Hey, Business Casual listeners, I've been using the Brio Air Purifier for a little under a month, and I'm highly impressed with the performance. It has drastically improved my indoor air quality, and its patent advanced particle removal technology is second to none. It's also incredibly convenient to use and maintain, making it an ideal choice for anyone looking to improve their home air quality. I've noticed a few cool things so far. You can feel the air becoming clean. It dries out the air a bit. So using this with a humidifier would be ideal for those who like to retain some moisture in the air. My ceiling fans where I use Brio most often has less dust buildup. Some need to know starter info. When I first plugged the Brio in and let it run, it had a strong plastic smell due to high heat injection molding residue Wiping the Brio down with soap, water, and a microfiber cloth, then allowing it time to fully dry helps significantly. Um, a surprise use case I did not expect was when my wife was cooking and the salmon got away from her and the smoke in the house started to fill the kitchen. I quickly grabbed a towel and began to fan the smoke from the smoke detector, not to wake up my sleeping six month baby. I realized this would be an excellent job for Brio. I grabbed it from the living room and plugged it into the kitchen, making the job of not setting the smoke detector off a breeze. In just two weeks, it helped my air quality and dust accumulation and helped stop my baby from waking up. Do you even have to ask? Yes, I recommend the Brio. As a special offer for my listeners, use code MILES, M-Y-L-E-S, 15, to get 15% off the Brio. And let me know what you think about this incredible machine in the comments. Peace. Bye. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to Business Casual. I'm your host, Miles Brown. And today we have a peculiar topic because it comes from my father. And some of the things that he says are almost like prophetic you know the father can speak into the son's life and <clears throat> actually change their destiny and my father said to me remember in business when one door closes you should start smiling immediately because the father is preparing three new doors that he's open for your blessing. And sometimes in life, I fret when a door closes. I'm like, oh man, I gotta go find another door. I gotta go knock. I gotta, you know, this door is closed. I've been used to eating good here and now, boom. there's a void where there once was real tangible nourishment financially and what that should do when my father says when one door closes three doors are being opened the simplified version is there's always opportunity in tomorrow there's always opportunity. So many things converge each day because of the handiwork of the Father, even in a fallen state that we live in here on earth um, with the system being run by the devil. Our Father in heaven is so powerful that there are abundant opportunities for his chosen people, people who live purpose-driven lives, who are not out here wasting time, not caught up in foolish babbling, not caught up in gossip and hearsay. People that truly want to understand what they need to do here on earth to please the Father. There will always, always, always be many opportunities for people like that. And the devil, his whole job is to send demons to mess with you enough 
to where you forget that the opportunity are multiplying in front of you. They're not dividing. They're not subtracting. And if these things are happening, then that's a presence of a demonic entity because the harvest that the Lord has blessed you with can become a part of the devourer because he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. <clears throat> so when the Lord plants this beautiful garden in front of you and the, har <clears throat> the harvest is ready to come up, the devourer comes in to seek what he may destroy. Now, you being the farmer may not have seen the harvest come in overnight. You may have seen it come in over months, years, however long your blooming process is financially in your business. But if you don't make decisions based on godly principles, what looks like a shortcut in good money today will turn into an absolute pain and nightmare later on. Um, businesses are meant to be up and down and not taking time in your down season to properly rest, reevaluate, and then go back at it and attack. It becomes really rough even when the good times are here, not to be scared and panicked of the bad times or the closed door. But the closed door has three opportunities being open spiritually, just as something with, like, we don't even know how many doors truly are being open for us. We're just saying three because the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, they all want something amazing for us so we just use three symbolically but the blessings that will reign forevermore is eternal and right now we're living a very morbid life like this life that we know it right now will end <clears throat> one day we'll be in the grave and what I know about Death, seeing it up close recently, is that the legacy you lead, live on is transmuted through the energy you exude while you're here. We have a life force and a life energy that is either tapped into a pure source or tapped into a dark source. Um, what we're seeing in the media we're seeing the dark source, mostly dark. But what we see around us and in in people who live their life out in front of us, there are many sources of light where we know the intentions were good, <clears throat> the opportunities were, were pure. We seen the Father move heaven and earth for this person while they were here. And these should be a faith driver to allow you to know that finances are the least worries to the most high. They're big to us because we're going through it and we spend money on things. And the Bible says money cures all answers or whatever here on earth. But there are eternal consequences where we won't even think about money where the, the true thought will be what mindset was I in while living? Was it faith? Did I have faith? Did I have resolve? Was I walking in humility and mercy? Was I treating my fellow man ethically and morally and what was my impact on the earth? Did I 
get greedy at gain and polluted at the expense like the Lord doesn't seek that things are destroyed he get, he left enough here for us to figure it out um, in a way that wouldn't destroy this place but um ethically how we move in business has to all structure and come from a place of pure understanding that when you resonate with the Father, your energy is pure and your energy has a way of It has a way of resonating, transmuting whatever you may think you're going through at the time. Give it back to the Father. Understand that we only have a short time in this mortal life. It seems longer than what it really is at times, and it seems short at others. That's how I know time isn't really real. We're in a simulation of what eternity will be like. Whose side are you going to pick? Darkness? And we know what darkness looks like here in this realm. Or light. Infinite opportunities and possibilities are in the light. Darkness comes with great gain, but there's no growth to it. It's dead. So you're not really gaining because what you give up to get it, to obtain costs you infinitely more in a currency that you can't understand currently. It's like trying to explain Bitcoin to somebody uh, in the early like 70s or 80s. It just be for the average person. They I don't understand. I don't what why. Why this and our eternal bank accounts have goodwill and cheer for how much we allow the Father to flow through us here in this realm on earth. Thank you guys for listening. Until next time, remember my father saying, when one door closes, three doors are opening. Peace.